Okay, so first of all, this video is based off of a blog post by policyviz.com, and I think he and I both had the same idea, which is that it's just a bunch of dots, so you should be able to make it in Excel. And it turns out that you can, but it is quite complicated. So we'll start off with the basics, which is how do you make a circle of dots in Excel? So we need to have some degrees, and I'm going to have degrees going from 0 to 360. Then we need to turn these degrees into radians, and it's nice and easy to do this in Excel. There's just a function that you can use, and then we'll double click to send that formula down. Then we need to convert the radians into our x values and in order to do that we will use the cos function and then select the number here and double click to send the formula down and for the y values we need to use the sine function and again we select the radians and then double click to send that formula down then we can select the two columns with our x and y values and go to insert and insert a scatter chart and if I delete the title here and make this more of a square we can now see that we have a circle of dots now we don't actually want a complete circle we want just half a circle so I can delete the numbers down here then I need to adjust the size of the chart again and now we have a half of a circle now, of course, we don't want just one circle. We actually want multiple circles stacked on top of each other. So we need to get circles that have an increasing radius. At the moment, this circle has a radius of 1. You can see it crosses through 1 here, and also here, and then it crosses through minus 1 here. And in order to get a circle with a larger radius, I'm going to copy these numbers here. Then we'll drag down the formula for the x values, and we'll take this and we'll times it by 1.1. And then I will double click to send that formula down, and we'll do the same thing for the y values. So we'll times this by 1.1 as well. And now the chart isn't quite selecting the correct range. We need to drag this down by one more row. And now we have two half circles and the first one has a radius of 1 and the second one has a radius of 1.1 so in order to create our chart we're going to have to make a table like this though of course it is going to be much more complicated i'll start by creating my headings so first of all i have to decide how many arcs i want to have and i want to have 11 so I'm going to put the numbers in here going from 1 to 11. And then I'll make these columns smaller so they don't take up so much room. Then I need to decide how many dots I want. Now I will need the total number of dots to add up to 435. And I need for the bigger arcs to have a larger number of dots. But for the time being, I'm just going to make all of the arcs have the same number of dots. I'm going to make them all 40, and then we can adjust these numbers later. Then I'm going to create a sequence, and the number of rows is going to be the number of dots here, and close brackets and enter. And now I have a sequence of numbers going from 1 to 40. In order for the math here to work, I actually need the sequence to start at 0. So now I have numbers going from 0 to 39. Then I need to decide how much space I want between each of the dots, because I need the dots to be evenly spaced out across the arc going from 0 degrees to 180 degrees. And in order to get that, I'm going to do 180 divided by the number of dots minus 1, and that needs to be in brackets. And then I'll drag this formula across. Then we'll take our sequence and we'll multiply the numbers by the amount of space. 
And now I have numbers going between 0 and 180. This might be easier to see if I have a smaller number of dots. So if I make this 10, you can now see we have 10 numbers here and there's 20 degrees between each of them going between 0 and 180. And I can change the number of dots here to be whatever I want. And I will always end up with that number of numbers and they will always be evenly spread out starting from 0 and going to 180. I'll change this back to 40 now. And at the moment, all of these numbers are in degrees. So the next thing we need to do is change this so they are radians. And so we will take this function and put everything inside of it. Then if we say that this table is going to be for the x values, I then need to convert these into my x values. And to do this, I'm going to put everything inside the cos function. And now I have my x values here. The next step is that I need each of the arcs to have a different radius. So we'll start with 1 here, and then I will make the next one 1.1, and I'll get all of them to increase by 0.1 each time. Then we'll take this whole formula here and multiply it by the radius and enter. Then I can drag this across to fill in the rest of the table. Now I have all of the x values, I need to create the y values, so I need to make another table. And we'll start by just copying all of the headings. So I'll take this here and drag it across until I get to 11. Then I'll drag it down so I get the first four rows. And we'll make these columns thinner so they don't take up as much space. And then we want this table to be for the y values. And for this, I'm just going to copy the formula here and paste it into here. And for the y values, the only thing that needs to change is that instead of this being cos, it needs to be sine and enter. And then I can drag this across to fill in this table. Now I need to put the x and y values into one column each. So I'm going to insert some space here. And then we'll have x values and we'll have y values. And I'm going to use the to col function. And my array is going to be all of the x values. But we need to drag it past the bottom of this table because I plan on changing the number of dots later on. And so some of these rows are going to increase. So I'm going to drag this down to 100 rows as that's definitely more than the amount that I'm going to need. Then for the ignore section, I'm going to need to tell it to ignore blanks because I've just selected a whole bunch of blanks that I don't actually want to include. And enter. Then I want to do the same thing for the y values. So we'll d equals to col and we'll select this array and we want it to go to row 100. And then we want to ignore all of the blanks and close brackets and enter. Now we have the x and y values set up. We can select all of this. And if you plan on changing the total number of dots later on, you might want to select extra rows at the bottom. Then we can go to insert and we can insert a scatter chart. And now we have our scatter chart. Now we need to adjust the number of dots. So you should be able to see here that the smaller arcs have dots that are more closely clumped together, whereas the bigger arcs have dots that are more spread out. And this is because if you want your dots to look like they are evenly distributed, you actually need the bigger arcs to have a larger number of dots. And we need for the total number of dots to add up to 435. So this part is just 
trial and error, you need to just adjust the numbers until you get something that looks the way that you want it to and also adds up to the correct number. Now, I know the numbers that I want, so I'm just going to put them in and I will decrease the number of dots for the smaller arcs and then we will increase the number of dots for the bigger arcs. And now I have a chart that looks the way that I want it. The next step is to make half the dots a different colour. So for this, I'm going to need a third table. And I'm going to copy all of the headings again. So we'll select this here and then drag it across until we get to 11. Then I'll drag it down to get the first four rows. And I'll make these columns thinner. Then I'm going to copy the formula for the Y values here. And I need it so that I end up with only half the numbers in this formula. So I'm going to delete this part here and I will rename this half. Then I'll take the number of dots and divide it by two and then drag this across. And because I need for this to be a whole number, I'm going to change this to 13. And I think it's easier to explain this if I do it separately first and then put it into one formula. So we'll start with the sequence function and the number of rows that I want is the number of dots that I have. Then I will do an if test and that will be if the numbers in this sequence here are less than or equal to the number that is half the number of dots. And then if that is true, I want the number one. And if it is false, I want an NA error. And then close brackets and enter. And now I have the number one going until we get to 13. And everything after that is an NA error. And the NA error will stop the numbers from being plotted in the chart. Now I can put this all together. So I'm going to say if the sequence of the number of dots is less than or equal to half the number of dots, then I want it to show me the results from this formula here. And if not, I want it to show me the NA error and close brackets and enter. And now I have numbers at the top and NA errors at the bottom. And I can just drag this across to fill in the rest of the table. And I end up with numbers at the top and NA errors at the bottom. Now we need to put this all into one column. So I'll add in a new column here. And this is going to be for Republicans. So I'll just put an R in here. And then we'll say to col again. And the array is going to be this array here. And we're going to make it go down to row 100. And we want to ignore the blanks and close brackets and enter. And now we have this extra column here. We can add another series to the chart. So we'll right click and go to select data. And then add in a new series. And the X values will be the same ones that we used before. So we can just select this column. And then for the Y values, we're going to select the new column for Republicans, which we just made. And OK. And OK again. And now we have half the dots as a different color. Now we need to do some adjusting. Firstly, we need all of these numbers to be whole numbers, so I will change the ones that are currently 0.5. Then we will do equals sum to find out how much these add up to. And the actual number of Republicans is 218. So we need to do some adjusting here in order to get the correct number. And I'm just going to do this by eye based on the dots that look like they're sticking out a bit more. So I'll change this one to 24 and this one to 21. 
Now the rest of this is just formatting. So I will double click on the chart to open up the formatting bar. Then we need to change the axes. So I will fix this to make sure it stays at zero and then change the maximum to two. Then for the horizontal axes, I'll change the minimum to two and the maximum to two to get rid of the gaps at the top and at the sides. Then I no longer need the axes, so I can delete that. And I'll delete the grid lines as well. Then at the moment, the chart has a gray border, so I will just change that to no line to get rid of it. Then we can change the way the dots look. So I'm going to change the marker so that it has no border. Then I will increase the size of the markers to make the dots a bit bigger and then change the fill. It's already blue, but I'll change this to be a different shade of blue. Then I will change the dots for the Republicans as well. So we'll go no line here and then increase the size of the markers so they're the same size as the other ones and then change the fill so that it is red. Then it is also the case that there are four empty seats, so I need to represent those as well. And I'm just going to change the color of these dots manually. So I'll click once to select the whole thing and then click a second time to select just one dot. Then I'll change the fill on this to gray. And I will change the color of this dot as well, and this one, and this one. So now I have four gray dots. And of course, we can adjust the size of this chart as well if we want to change it a bit. Okay, so in this video, I have shown you how to make a parliament chart in Excel, and that is everything.